Hi friends, it's story time. Let the wild rumpus start. The Story of the Rude Children by Sybil von Alfers. The Story of the Rude Children. Under the ground, deep in the earth among the roots of the trees, the little root children were fast asleep all winter long. They felt nothing of the biting wind, the cold snow, or the stinging hailstorms. They slept peacefully in their warm burrows, dreaming of the sunshine in which they had played all through the summer. And what wonderful dreams they were! When at last winter came to an end and the sun began to melt the snow, Mother Earth came along with her candle to wake them up again. "'Wake up, children,' she called kindly. "'Time to get up now. You've slept long enough.' Spring is coming and there's work to be done. I brought you scissors, needles, and thread, and pieces of cloth so that you can all make new clothes. Wake up. The children yawned and stretched. Then they jumped up merrily. Hooray, spring is coming. Mother Earth had pieces of lovely colored cloth in her basket. Each of the root children chose their own color to make a dress. The snowdrop chose a snow white cloth, the forget-me-not a sky blue piece, the buttercup bright yellow, the daisy white with yellow and a bit of red, and the poppy a bright red. Then they sat down in a cozy circle and began to work busily. They cut, they sewed, and pressed until everything fitted exactly. And as they worked, they sang all the spring songs that they knew. As soon as they had finished making their new dresses, they went up to Mother Earth in a long procession. Mother Earth looked over her spectacles in surprise when she saw the root children coming so soon. Well, well, you have been quick, she exclaimed, and how splendid you all look. Even the little ants who had been helping Mother Earth to wind up her wool came to stare inquisitively. They had never seen such lovely clothes. But there was still more to be done. The ladybirds, the beetles, the grubs, and the bumblebees also had been sleeping under the ground and had now woken up. They had to be washed and brushed, painted colorfully, and made to shine so that they would look as beautiful as possible. What a hustle and bustle was going on down there. Up above ground, the warm sun was already bringing out the new green leaves on the trees. Would the root children be ready in time? At last it was spring. Mother Earth opened the door, then out into the warm spring sunshine came the procession of beetles, ladybirds, and root children. In the wood, the butterflies fluttered happily around the flowers. The lilies of the valley found a cool spot in the shade of the trees beside the blue violet, and there they let their flower bells tinkle. There, too, old father Sliff Slaff Slipperslack came slowly creeping along. Ha ha! There you all are. Welcome to the forest, he called to the children. The little violet looked at him shyly from her safe place behind a tree. She had never seen such a creature before. Summer came. In the little brook that flowed between the meadows, the water lily let herself be carried over the water like a princess. The reeds whispered in the wind. The forget-me-nots came and stepped carefully into the water. But the beetles grumbled. It's getting too crowded here. Go and play somewhere else. In the flower meadows, the root children were having a high time. They danced in the warm sunshine. Hop and skip, whoopee, what fun. If only it were always summer. The butterflies fluttered above them, and even the beetle risked a dance. The crickets chirped, the bees buzzed, and that was their music. Mind out, little grass, don't fall down. But summer came to an end. The sharp autumn wind whirled the brightly colored leaves through the air and tugged at the root children's clothes. Hoo, called the wind, hurry home, it's getting cold here, it's time to go back to bed. So then they all went back again in a long procession. Mother Earth was standing by the door and hugged each child one by one. Come in, children, she said, and you too, beetles and bees. It's warm and cozy in here, and I've got something for you to eat and drink. Then you must go to sleep until I wake you up again in the springtime. And all the little root children went down under the ground again to start their long winter's sleep. The End